It's been eight months since Apple released the AirPods Max. And at that time, I had zero interest in spending $550 on headphones. In fact, I refused to watch any of the early reviews because there was just no way I was going to spend $550. So I stuck with my $20 airport skull candies and went about my business. That is until the AirPods Max started going on sale. Hey, I'm Jared. And yes, in the last few months, I finally broke down and picked up a pair of the AirPods Max and saved $100 in the process. A few months ago, leading up to my family trip to Hawaii, which I was going to have to endure a seven and eight hour flight, I started looking around for new headphones to take on that flight. I have some old wired Bose QC20s, but they are wired. And some cheap wireless Teotronic noise canceling headphones, which are bulky, have iffy noise cancellation and pretty bad audio lag. The AirPods Max started going on sale for about $100 off not too long ago, and then I debated all day and then the deal expired and I lost it. A couple days later, they went on sale again, so I finally decided to pick up a pair. And since they keep going on and off sale, definitely check out the links in the description for the best price if you're looking to pick up some of these AirPods Max. The first adopters of the AirPods Max had a number of issues with battery and connectivity, but Apple's released a number of firmware updates to address those issues. So let me tell you about my experience getting these just recently and whether or not I think they're worth it at this point in 2021. The packaging for the AirPods Max is exactly what you expect from Apple. Very basic, very plain, and on the inside, you get the headphones, a little bit of paperwork and a basic USB-C to lightning cable. The headphones themselves feel premium. They feel like they're made extremely well with aluminum on the outside, some kind of rubber coating and mesh headband. And of course you got some really cool slick buttons that are reminiscent of the Apple Watch. Then of course there's that infamous purse case looking thing, which we'll get to in just a moment. Strangely enough, the first thing that I noticed about the AirPods Max was the smell. There was actually a pretty pungent odor that these headphones carried, pulling them brand new right out of the box. You know what? I, I bet if I get the box, I can still smell it. Oh yeah, it's, it's still in there. It's a pretty potent stench, but luckily that smell does go away from the headphones after just about a day. So I didn't notice it at all after the first day that I had these. The outside of the ear cups are aluminum and they're in typical Apple fashion, a nice smooth machined aluminum. They feel good, they look good. The buttons on top, I am really happy with. One of the things that I was going back and forth with on a number of different headphones I was looking at was the buttons. Some of them just had swipe controls on the side. Some of them had other weird buttons that did like three or four different things with one button. And I didn't like that. I liked the idea of having a physical volume button. And then of course, having the button to actually change the modes between transparency and regular noise canceling is really nice as well. The volume button digital crown thing itself is in particular, really good. It's super granular when you're trying to change the volume. If you imagine changing the volume on your iPhone or iPad, there's big jumps in the volume level when you press those buttons. But when you change the volume with the AirPods Max, it's in much smaller increments. It's very granular, so you can get exactly the right level of noise or sound that you're looking for. The ear cushions on the AirPods Max are actually removable, and I believe you can actually buy different colors if that's what you're looking for. But I purposely went for black or space gray or whatever color these are because I'd be concerned about some kind of oil or something getting on these ear cushions and kind of staining them over time or making them look dingy or gross. So I purposely went for black just for that reason. But the ear cushions are just held on with magnets, which is really nice. So they're super easy to change or clean if that's something you need to do. The headband itself is aluminum with a rubber coating, kind of like the Magic Keyboard case for the iPad Pro. And then there's a mesh on top to kind of just rest on your head. And the mechanism to extend those headphones out is actually very smooth. That one was stuck for just a moment, but normally it's very, very smooth and it feels really good and of course premium. And then around the top, you have a couple of microphone ports on each side for noise canceling. And then you have your lightning port for charging. So one of the biggest criticisms about the AirPods Max from other people was the case. And the case is a little different, right? It doesn't fully cover the AirPods. And when they sit in here, it kind of looks like a little purse. Now in person, it wasn't really as weird or distracting as I thought it might be. It's actually just fine. The case does not do a good job of protecting AirPods. You can see down here that there's cutouts around the side. And of course you get a cutout for the lightning port. And then the headband is not covered at all. But of course, one of the reasons you need the case is because as good as the buttons are on the AirPods Max, there is no power button. So you need a case that has magnets built inside 
down in here that tells the AirPods to go into a lower power state. Now, because I was going on such a long trip to Hawaii, I didn't want to risk damaging my brand new AirPods, my brand new expensive AirPods, so I actually picked up this other case. This is the Intelli Carry-On Max case for AirPods Max, and you can see that they are custom built for the AirPods Max. You have a spot right here for the headband, and you have individual spots right here where the ear cups sit. And of course, this does have magnets built in here with this little fin, just like Apple's original case, so that it does put the AirPods into the low power mode. So when you press them in here, you're set, they're sturdy, they're not going anywhere. The case is rigid on the outside to give you a bit more protection, and they go into low power mode like I was saying. The case also comes with this little nice cable caddy thing. So I actually got the Apple Lightning to 3.5 adapter to go ahead and keep in here. And I'm also gonna throw a lightning cable in here just in case for charging. This case is pretty good. It folds up nice, it zips, it's rigid on the outside, but it is a bit bulky, right? It's a bit more bulky than that. And it's also quite a bit bigger than the Teotronics case for my other wireless headphones and my Bose QC25. So it is a rather large case, but if you're looking for something a little bit better protective than the original Apple case, this IntelliCase is pretty good. So how do these sound? I'm not an audiophile by any means, but I can tell the difference between a good quality audiophile and a bad quality audiophile. Difference between good digital audio and a tape. And to my ears, these sound really, really good. Now, whether it was sitting on a plane for seven or eight hours, flying back and forth to Hawaii, or sitting on the couch playing a game, the sound coming from these kind of blows me away. It's extremely clear and loud without distortion, and the bass just feels good. You know when you get bassy headphones that just have a thump, but you don't really feel it? These kind of make you feel it without being overly aggressive, not something that you can't listen to for a long period of time, right? You can really hear that bass thump when you hear that Netflix dun -dun sound or in the buildup of a dramatic scene. Like for example, I was watching Mosquito Coast on the airplane and it's a pretty dramatic show and there's times where there's just a buildup of this music, this kind of low hum that just gets louder over time. And this thing just sounded amazing. It felt like it was coming through me, like I could actually feel the bass in my whole body, but not aggressive. And then listening to some decent quality music on Spotify and Apple Music, there's just a good separation between the different instruments and the different sounds coming into your ears. I just think it does a really good job of presenting all of the different parts of audio to my ears. And I've really enjoyed listening to them over the last few weeks. Now, when I talked earlier about the buttons, this one switches between transparency mode and noise canceling mode. And after having used different noise canceling headphones on airplanes, like the QC25, those audio techtronics, whatever that I used, I've used a couple of different Sony ones. This is by far the best noise canceling experience I've had on an airplane yet. It just does an extremely good job of blocking out that low level hum from the airplane, all of that noise. You're still gonna hear people kind of talking and coughing and sniffling around you, but for all of that stuff that's just a constant noise, it does an amazing job at blocking that out. Then there's the transparency mode, which really kind of brings in the outside world into your headphones. So you can still listen to your music, still hear it nice and loud and clear, but you can clearly hear what is going on around you, whether that's a car going by on the street if you're walking or a person next to you talking. You can actually have a conversation while playing audio with these and transparency mode on. John Gruber on his website and on his podcast has said that it's uncanny. And that is really the best word to describe how this transparency mode works on these things. It really is just uncanny how it feels like you're just not wearing headphones at all, but you're getting the music, you're getting the audio around you. It's just kind of crazy. Now I'm not gonna get into the Apple lossless stuff or spatial audio because it's just not something I'm interested in, but I will say that the lack of audio delay is superb as well. I am super aware of any kind of audio delays with lip sync and things like that when you're watching a movie or a TV show, and any bit of delay drives me insane. It just completely takes me out of the moment. These have some of the lowest audio sync delay that I've ever tried on a pair of headphones. They work so good with an iPhone and an iPad and a Mac that it's essentially not there at all. And I can completely watch a movie or a TV show without even thinking about any issues with audio. It just feels like I have a wired connection. Now, probably even before audio quality, comfort is gonna be the most important thing when having a pair of headphones. I have an inexplicably egg-shaped head that's not very big. 
and it's to the point where I have trouble finding eyeglasses that fit correctly or hats. When I bought these, I was a little bit worried that for the price, they just weren't going to fit me correctly. But the good news is they do. As weird as I look, they fit and feel really good. As someone who's not very tall and doesn't have a big head, the headphones fit absolutely perfectly when they're pushed all the way up, so not extended at all on either side. People have said that the headphones feel heavy, and maybe they are a little bit heavy when you compare them to something like the older Bow QC25s, but the fit is actually just so perfect that the weight really doesn't matter. It's distributed completely evenly across my head. Compared to the Bose headphones that I have and the Teotronics, these headphones fit me better than any of the others. They're not nearly as bulky as the others and they just fit right. They don't hang down too far on my head and they just perfectly encapsulate my ears. And if you're a glasses wearer like I am, I found that these AirPods Max are the perfect combination between cushiness of the ear cups and the tightness of the headband to not cause pain or fatigue over many hours of wearing the headphones with glasses. So fit wise, I'm really happy with the fit and the feel of the AirPods Max, even after many hours of sitting on the couch, playing a game, or many hours of sitting in a plane, watching a movie. Now, battery was one thing I was concerned about just based on previous reports that I've read over the last few months. And the good news is I've had no issues with battery. It seems Apple has fixed all of those issues with firmware updates. Now, Apple says that you should be getting about 20 hours of battery life with the AirPods Max. Now you can see here on my iPad Pro that the AirPods Max lost about a third of their battery life after a seven hour flight, which lines up pretty well with Apple's numbers. Now the AirPods Max do have two different sleep modes. When you take them off your head, they go into one mode. And then after a period of time, they go into an even deeper sleep mode. And I have found that if I don't place them in the case and I let them sit around for a day or two and then I pick them up, the battery is a bit lower than I expect it to be after sitting idle. That's one of the issues I have with the AirPods Max is just not having a power button. I think if Apple just added power button or had a way to hold this button down or hold both buttons down to turn the device on and off, that would eliminate any battery issues or complaints that anybody still has following any of the firmware updates that Apple has released. So we're getting near the end of the summer of 2021. Apple released these AirPods Max about eight months ago and you can get these on sale frequently for $100 off or sometimes even a little bit more. Are they worth it at this point? For most people, probably not. If you are looking for a premium looking device, something that feels premium, something that actually feels premium when you wear it, something that sounds premium, and something that works really well with Apple devices, then these are definitely something to consider. Are these the best noise canceling wireless headphones out there that you can get? I don't know, I haven't tried them all and I'm not going to spend money on all of them to try them. But I can say that at $450 or sometimes less, these are very, very good. So if you have the money, you want a premium device, I definitely recommend you at least check them out. Try them at an Apple store, try them at a Best Buy, or buy them and return them if you don't like them. But for me, after saving $100, I feel like I made a good decision. They fit me really well, they fit what I need to do with them really well, and I'm pretty happy with them. 